Paul Klein in Chicago on art marketing and consulting. And, uh, and we've, we've remained friends and we've been Zooming now for almost three years ourselves, separately. And, uh, and I, in our conversations, <clears throat> pardon me, in our conversations I've learned a lot about him of a pretty major illustrator, painter, musician, He's a fascinating uh, fellow, and I think everyone's going to enjoy his presentation. But just a little example of, um, he, he was in CA Magazine, Communication Arts. That is a prestigious, one of the most prestigious uh, publications in the design industry, and uh, quite an accomplishment. Uh, but also, he's illustrated books that have sold millions of copies. So I'm not going to say any more, except I want him to make sure he talks about this instrument that he uh, that he uses in his band. So take it away, Paul. All right. Well, it's uh, it's uh, great to be here today, and uh, I've surely enjoyed uh, seeing the other folks uh, make presentations, and uh, it's wonderful uh, just just to, to do this experience for me every time I do it I, I you know you do you do workshops and you do presentations and and every time I do it 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 reminds me what I'm doing and you know you can kind of get in what I'm doing today what I'm doing this minute what I'm you know that sort of thing and uh, so it's it's it, it's a really great experience for me to put to kind of think about this uh, I'm going to share my screen here and, and kind of get started, or and get started. Oh, dis you disabled screen sharing. Okay, and if everyone would go ahead and um, if everyone would go ahead and uh, mute during Paul's presentation, and then we can unmute um, during the Q and A. So it should be ready, Paul. Okay. I thought I would, uh, can you see that? Yes. Okay. Uh, I thought I would start with uh, just talking about a little bit where I am. I'm in Iowa and I know we've got people from around the world here listening. And uh, I've, I've been, it, especially enjoyed the, uh, uh, so, you know, kind of getting a little connection uh, with the folks in Ireland to seeing seeing where you are. Uh, this is uh, looking west out out our out our door. Now we bought a farm 25 years ago, a farmette, and uh, small, and now smaller as uh, uh, the, the the Des Moines area keeps expanding. So, but anyway. Um, we still have farmland straight out to our west, and it's just, the corn is just starting to peak up through the soil there. When we look the other way, this is uh, what was used to be my studio. It's a 19th century schoolhouse, and uh, we had been around, moved around a couple times on the property, and, and we renovated it for my studio and lived in the farmhouse. But we were gone for uh, several years so we sold the house and now we're back living in the schoolhouse and uh you know, all handmade and and uh, it was it was it's we're enjoying ourselves there's a little few inconveniences but uh we're really enjoying it uh the as you know i you may know but uh, we have weather here and i don't know this i think this looks like we're surfing but really this is just uh this this spring uh, with uh, uh, an abundance of, uh, of ice and snow here. And uh, with weather, I wanted also to include kind of this next picture here for the folks in Oklahoma, because we sure share uh, um, a, uh, a, a lot of tornadoes. And this was a beautiful little barn with a, uh, a bent roof. It's got not in great shape, but it sure got uh, trashed and can you hear me? Yes. Okay. That's all right. Uh, and, and in, 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 in a tornado here, I was on here, and luckily the schoolhouse was saved, but the other buildings lost their roofs. But uh, there is a happy ending to the story. That's the that's the barn, and now this is uh, after more renovation. This is it used to be a corn crib, and now it's my studio, which just just luckily right at the beginning of COVID, the, the, it was finished up. And 
I, I, I think of a, a lot about tools. I'm a, I, as Mark said, I'm a musician. Uh, uh, and, and, and one of the tools that I use as a musician is language. And uh, this is the same view to the West that I showed you in the first. I'm, uh, and uh, this is for a book called Rhythm of the Seasons. And obviously, you know, I'm using real, realism here and uh, to connect with this, with this um, farm landscape. It's a, it's a story about a boy who was killed in a farm accident. And if I can say it without my voice shaking, uh, I use my son as the model for this. And our, and our cat, Bingo, he happy to help. But as you can imagine, there, this, is, this is, you know, the kind of thing where I have many connections to the work that I do. This story was very meaningful being, I was a kid on a farm and I've known, you just know people who have been changed and, or, or, or permanently by injury and that sort of thing on the farm over the years. And this, this kid was killed and, but his mother uh, started a wonderful organization to, to help for farm safety. But this language of, of, uh, of, of realism is, is one way to connect with this, this place where I am. But uh, I did a, the first album we did, uh, I have a group called Worldport, and the first uh, album we did was called Prairies. And uh, uh, this, uh, I decided to do a series of uh, prints. This, this is a, a silk screen on uh, Japanese reed paper, it seemed appropriate uh, materials. And uh, uh, I'll, I'll just read a little bit as I kind of go through a few, just a few of these uh, images. But uh, this is a poem that, uh, that I wrote for the CD. We set sail on the prairie. We beat the boat like a drum, but silence closed around us and our hands eclipsed the sun. The wind chose not to touch us. The birds fell away unheard until we cast away the old songs unraveled word by word. Until we let go our old stories. Just a second here. Watch them drift beyond our sight. Then we listened to the grassland and heard the moon pass through the night. Now, when we raise our arms to greet it, the warm wind carries us along and we will sail another prairie to listen for its song. song. Uh, this, uh, these, these images, this language, was it felt so uh, it felt like a good way to approach it, much different than the than the other, but still I was able to I, I felt like I um, was able to uh, connect with with this place that I grew up and where these these things really took place, uh, uh, you, you know the 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 stories and the people and everything and the, the guy I you know, I recorded this with was uh, from here. Well, as a musician, uh, I'm, I'm always thinking about language and the name of our group is World Port. And we really, uh, are, I'm, I'm, I've written uh, most of the music and uh, it, it's inspired by music from around the world. This uh, piece that, uh, I have here is happens to be a cover tune from uh, uh, a, a, a Pavan uh, and uh, by Faure, but I'll, I'll play a little bit. It's real short. I picked a couple short things to play.
Is, is that okay? Does it sound okay? Yeah, okay, that was good. <laughs> we had a little trouble getting, making sure the video was working. Well, I talked about about uh, languages uh, and uh, uh, it, 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 when I work as a musician, I'm constantly putting on a different language to, uh, to help me express the music that I'm playing. This next piece, this is two minutes, so I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna wear you out with music here, but um, uh, it's, it's got, this is a, just built on a blues effect, a tune, I, you know, a little tune I wrote and called the guys up and say, hey, we're gonna do this today. And they said, what key? And I gave them the key and there we go. So uh, this is a thing called down two. I'm going to uh, go on here and show some work. Uh, the first, uh, I, I, I'll tell you a little bit my my background. I was an, I worked as a musician and traveled and worked with bands and uh, as a trumpet player. And uh, later on uh, in in college, I added flute and and uh, uh, it, and I, I taught for a while. Uh, taught uh, taught music. Uh, and uh, my one of my instructors that I had in college when I was about 30 gave me a book called Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain. I'd never drawn before and I got fascinated with doing it and I was also worried about losing my hearing which seems which is something that's continued but it hasn't affected my music. It makes it a little bit hard to hear voices sometimes and you know that uh, but um, so I went back to school for a while, and the first job I got out, out of there was as an art director and, uh, uh, and designer, and then I became a creative director. But I always, our, our studios always had uh, illustrators. I hung out with them and found uh, they were very helpful. Uh, uh, I, uh, this, uh, the first work I got was for an educational book company and I was going to do uh, covers and uh, posters for young adult uh, fiction. I thought, ah, you know, oh, okay, okay, that'll be fun. You know, that'll be fun. I'm sure it'll be kind of whatever, you know, uh, for teenagers or whatever. Well, this, this is one of the pieces. This is uh, where the red fern grows. Uh, and the first book, I, when I read it, I, I was, they were all just, they were, it turned out they were Newbery Award winners and they were st stupendous. They were just so moving and so meaningful. And uh, when I'm doing these, all of these, when I, when I see them again, 
Um, there, this is a, a book called Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry. I, re I remember the, uh, the depth of the, uh, what the authors did and, and my work always is to try to live up to that, that, uh, that quality. But I also remember the people who are models. And, uh, uh, and so that every time that, and I, I use models for this whole series, and it was a, it, it's a really, it really was a wonderful experience. This, this one's a, a, a fellow musician in town here, a klezmer uh, musician and uh, an art director himself and creative director. Um, and, and what a wonderful model. But these, these uh, uh, illustra illustration uh, opportunities were just tremendous. A light in the forest. This has got a, wrink a wrinkle in time. This is Martha. We lived in Nashville for a while uh, when I started uh, freelance, being a freelancer and my wife was getting her doctorate. And this is our neighbor, Martha, uh, would, would greet you every time. Hi, how are you? And but she never remembered us from time to time. So, but she was a neighbor across the hall in our, in our apartment. And she was a wonderful, what a wonderful spirit. I was able to be able to help ha, work with what she brought to it to kind of, to get the spirit of that wonderful story. Uh, it, these, uh, this, these folks who were part of this, um, uh, I'm I'm I, I'm always been appreciative, and and now uh, Stratton here um, uh, is uh, is a gr you know a grown man, and uh, um, uh, w what a wonderful opportunity when I go out and tell talk to kids about what what is it like to be on the other side of the fence, and uh, and at the moment it, I I forget what the, <laughs> the name of the wonderful book was. Uh, I mentioned I was in Nashville. Uh, this is a, a street performer I, a, who ended up, I uh, became a good friend, uh, Michael Frith was out. I saw him one day and, I, and uh, he didn't have the pencil, but I thought that, well, that would be a, a good thing. And I used the, this as a promotion and uh, uh, a, this guy Snee from a, um, a, uh, a Renaissance festival was uh, kind enough to be a, uh, a model for me, and well, uh, two wonderful guys on a on a park bench uh, at a music festival. Now these are pickers. These are guys I know, the, and I also know the suit, the black pants, the white shirt, uh, and uh, these guys have string ties on. I I never played in a band with string ties, but um, uh, I did play the did, did bring the white or the black pants and the white shirt to the gig. Uh, and uh, uh, and they were checking out another band, and uh, and I love them and I know them. I I I'm I'm sorry I really never met them. I just photos and I used the photo as the uh, uh, to, to, for this. I, when I was in Asheville. Um, uh, uh, work with uh, RCA and BM, uh, BMI or BMG uh, records uh, on a series of, uh, of album courses for what's called the Read. And uh, I went out, I, at the time I'm, I was very religious about getting reference. And so I went out to the, uh, uh, a farm and with, the, with Holsteins and got uh, uh, a wonderful reference of Holsteins and uh, um, didn't have the cowboy boots, and also the art director on it. Uh, uh, the, the I was being realistic, and he, he said, "Well, I think we need to cut down the size of the udder." So I had to make a smaller udder. I, 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 I'm not sure about that, but anyway, uh, this is uh, this was for the, uh, 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 a book uh, uh, for this book that the story uh, Walter Mitty. We're Kansas City here, this for Kansas City Orchestra. This is one of the books that I um, uh, illustrated and, and uh, very close to me, a very sweet story. Uh, and 
uh, the, it just turned out that the author of it wrote this in the 1920s, and it, it had become a, a one of the top ten bestsellers before I got it. But it had languished to a, selling a few hundred copies a year, and so. But it turns out that he lived down the street from from me, or he, he worked down the street from the Des Moines Community Playhouse at the time that he wrote this story in the 1920s. It was became, uh, I think, the first known as a Hallmark Hall, Hall of Fame uh, story I, and that I remembered from being a kid. Anyway, it was a, a, a wonderful opportunity to do, uh, to, uh, to have, uh, I'm going to do a show this uh, uh, coming up here in a couple of weeks uh, at a church where my wife was a choir director. And just this is, has a choir in it that I was able to use, and I use a lot of just a, a ton of models that are uh, now older. And, I, and it's going to be on, it's going to have to be online instead of in person. So instead of the, the new material, I'm going to uh, play all the people who are models. This is, this was my son and uh, what a wonderful experience, you know, but it, like I said, this is a sweet story. It's a religious story. I'm not a religious person, but I, I felt the connection with this beautiful story. Uh, uh, and and then I felt the responsibility and the honor that I had when people started asking me, would you, uh, would you sign this in memory of my child? And, uh, and so it's, it's, it's uh, you know, this work that, that we do, it just has a, a wonderful human connection. And I and I, I've I, I've been uh, crazy for doing it all the t all along, and uh, this just reminds me why. Uh, and this is a, this is a, a book called The Memory Box, and our neighbor lady, and, and a, a girl in my wife's choir, and Francis, and and uh, Julius Brooks, the wonderful saxophone player in town, Wayne Shoemaker. Uh, pastor to church and a wonderful friend. Last time I saw him, he was, he's, uh, we were playing on the street and he had his cane in his, in his 90s and Paul, you know, raised his hand and, and, uh, 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 and, and, and uh, he passed away last, last year in his 90s. This is a school library and uh, again, kids from school. Um, uh, uh, being the models for it, which is a wonderful experience. When I did this one, uh, when they were renovating the school, they asked me to do a, a, a mural for it, mural for it. And I, I've never done mural on the wall. I do a painting and then we have a, a, a print made, but it's a pretty good size uh, uh, image. Uh, I, I, you know, I forget, but it's, you know, eight feet long or 10 feet long. I've got one up on the wall here that's about the same size, another one. But I remember when we had the reception with the kids for this and the opening uh, with the, in, the, in the library, uh, one of the kids, I told him, I said, you know, you're going to see this and you're going to be able to come back when you're 30 years old and see this. And she said, that weirds me out. I'm going to run. Uh, this is this is a, a series that I uh, uh, when I, when I decide I'm going to instead of having six ideas for each image that I do, I want to. I'm always leaving things on the cutting room floor, but I make a habit of. Uh, I, I always want my uh, con, you know conceptual notion and uh, to push myself to find uh, different approaches to every image that I make. So. Uh, instead of like, and it's kind of a rule of thumb is about six, make sure that I have six things that can be, could be the final. And uh, um, so, but I, you, you, that leaves a lot of things on the floor. So I, this is a, uh, a painting series uh, for, you know, uh, not an illustration work, but this is for, uh, uh, you know, gallery, and I've had shows with this series. Uh, it's been a lot of fun and learned a lot. But since I'm fairly new to it, I've done those prints before and other print series. 
and uh, had them in galleries, but uh, I'm fairly new to this. So, but with, you know, where I met Mark and through Paul Klein and trying to get, get a, get my, you know, a, some basic understanding of, of the world that you folks all uh, uh, live in. Uh, this is a series called Paper Airplane. And I think of this, that I, uh, that I uh, make paintings of people who are dreamers. And in this case, I take a, a bit of nothing really and that uh, uh, only becomes something because we're human beings. And this, uh, uh, this image uh, is called Horizon Line. And it, 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 encapsulate a lot, it encapsulates a lot for me in, in the work that I do as a musician and an artist. And, and uh, in this uh, wonderful, mysterious, it's, I think of, uh, of music and art as, as magic. And, and, and really, my work is to call that magic up so that we, f we all find a place to go where we can be reminded of those things we already know about life. And it's, it's if, if you're, it's a, I know that Paul Medina will, will, will relate to this. It's, you're a, you're a singer and a guitar player. Uh, you, you can, you could have this, you could talk about the notes and you could talk about so many part elements of what, what's going on. I, on this, you know, you can talk about the structure of the face. By the way, the series I did, I wanted to do it from imagination, the, 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 the characters in this. And so I'm thinking about the nostril and this and whatever, you know, all the elements of it. But to really make it happen, it is something so mysterious and it has to, it has to feel natural. And, um, these, uh, I'll just run a few of these more from the series. This is one people, this is called Dreaming of Flight. And uh, this is, I, I, you know, I have a website and I said, I've, I've only sold prints. I haven't really sold originals on these. And, uh, and it's been a really interesting experience. I'm, I'm like I said, I'm getting my, my feet wet, just trying to do it. Um, this one has a, a feeling about it that, that I liked and, and that I wanted to emulate and move on with. Um, uh, and I talked about uh, languages. And, and so I've been uh, working to, uh, I, I, I see I loaded up a bunch of stuff here, but uh, to, uh, to do, kind of work on a new language for me. And uh, this is just some of the, I, I also uh, asked you a question last time, Paul, about iteration. Well, I'm at the, I'm at the you know, the very beginning of like learning to play the C scale kind of thing with this, uh, with this series of, of uh, image of, of work that I want to do. And, uh, and it's capturing an improvisational feel, but it's also, having more randomness in it. And I'm being very, uh, I, you know, I, uh, this, I'm exposing <laughs> my, my world. I made, I, 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 I work in that iteration where I don't know, why did I do, you know, another one of these, you know, it, it, it's just like, because I need to be used to it. I need to find it like with a, with, uh, playing an instrument, you need to, go with it to find it. There's, I guess I'm channeling Star Wars or that. Uh, um, let me get, get on here. And this, this image kind of encapsulates where I am in this process in that um, the, I'm, not, I'm not settled on materials or surface or anything like that. Uh, I know I want to incorporate the a drawing uh, and find the drawing, get to the surface uh, in, in connection with, uh, with realism. But uh, this, this, this encapsulates the problem 
in that, uh, the, although I found materials where I could do a loose drawing, it does, the, the line I don't, I'm not in love with yet. And, uh, and there's this kind of space where the drawing is and space where the realism is. Uh, and this is me just going back to more, a little <coughs> more of what I've done in the past. And, uh, and the, under here is a drawing and, uh, and maybe this one encapsulates most of where I want to go with this. Um, that's, that's, those are all the images. I'm, I, I appreciate uh, uh, the opportunity to talk with you about my work and to uh, share a little bit about what I do. Well, thank you, Paul. These are really exciting. And, and I know I'm not speaking just for myself. I love the integration of the music and the lyrical quality um, that's seen also in your paintings. Um, Paul, if you want to um, change from um, the screen share, and then we can open it up for questions. And if everyone wants to unmute, we can um, communicate our, our ideas and thoughts with Paul. So I will, um, who has a question or a comment for Paul? Who would like to share first? Harvey. I would like to know uh, what is the name of that flute? What is, instrument is that? Oh, that's a that's a, a good question. I didn't drag. I, I, let me drag it over here. I think I think I've got it. I've got it tethered at the other end. Uh, this this I I, I found this about uh, 35 years ago, a version of this. And I called up the guy who invented it. I read about it in the next Whole Earth Catalog. And the name of the instrument is this very romantic name, the electronic valve instrument. <laughs> the, e, it's, the EVI is what they is generally ref, referred to it as. So, uh, and uh, but it turns out I used to like I said as a trumpet player I was crazy for the trumpet I went nuts playing the trumpet uh, I couldn't get enough of it but I I came to a, a, a an end point where I couldn't do the language that I wanted wasn't there uh, I played the flute for a while but this instrument uh, uh, it's it's been it has been very satisfying for me uh, in in that it's. It's, it's, it's really basically, it's like a, key, a keyboard synthesizer without the keyboard and one more thing, which is the breath. But, uh, okay, so odd as that, odd as that is. So they, they made 200 of them. And uh, uh, and I bought I I bought one in Nashville, and then I've kind of made a collection of them to try to find people who didn't like them. They didn't catch on, so that's all they made. And um, there's a woodwind version of this that's uh, that's more prevalent. Uh, but uh, uh, I, I'm 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 still now I'm crazy about this for sure. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Who else has a question or a comment for Paul? Noel? Yeah, Paul, um, I really thoroughly enjoyed your presentation. Your talent is unbelievable in terms of how prolific you are, both in your painting and your, your drawing and your capturing of, of imagery, but also in your musical skills. And, and this, as, um, as well, you mentioned yourself, there's like, there's like a lyric, there's like a lyric that goes right through in a rhythm, both in the drawing and in and the music you play. And what has struck me as well is, um, there seems to be a lovely sense of emotion and a connection from, to the people, including your son, obviously. But the imagery that you use, there's a, ver a very powerful emotional imagery, which I think is very, very striking. And, and yet you have such a prolific range of themes and styles. But, but um, I'm curious to know, which is your favourite? Which is your favourite medium? And which is your favourite piece of work to date? Uh, oh, well, the, the, the favorite thing is the one, 
I'm going to work on this afternoon, which is I haven't started yet. Right. Uh, the the I, I'm it, with this new uh, approach. I, I, you know, I've never done that before. I've never gone, you know, oh, here's something where I'm, I don't know what that, you know, I don't usually don't know what I'm doing, but I just work through it. But this for sure, I don't exactly know where this is going. But it's it's but I I take I take that back. It's it's a wonderful kind of it's exploration that I haven't done. You know, I'm uh, uh, I'm 70 years old, so it's good time to have another expor, exploration. And uh, uh, the the emotion I I, I lost contact of. <laughs> of your question <laughs> too much, but uh, <laughs> I, I appreciate your uh, your your thoughts about it. I was gonna, I a battery went out, or I would have played one of my uh, Celtic tunes here. So, oh, uh, uh -huh. <laughs> uh, 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 but uh, that's what I, I you know I'm I'm if it, with it's the same with music. If it doesn't uh, you you have to breathe life into it and it's the same with all, with with all the work i have to find that entree where uh where i'm first i'm drawn into it it's like cracking open the surface of the canvas i'm trying to crack that open for me and make that emotional contact contact connection and uh and then once I do it for me, and then I'm working to make that happen for the, the folks who, who view it. And uh, um, I'm, I'm working, uh, I, I've spent several years working on, <laughs> on drawing the figure from imagination. I, I realize that there's nothing in there about that, with that, but exactly. But uh, so, you know, the face, uh, uh, I'm drawn to people's faces and, and just sitting across from someone uh, who's a model is, uh, I you know just stag it's kind of staggering just to stand there for a while and 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 look at them and kind of think of their where they've been where they're going you know their heart um, yeah it, it's 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 emotion it's emotional for me when when I have these characters that are coming from imagination it's more a process of discovering first to kind of feel that to try to breathe life into them, but to find out, to, to have them surface and, and be, be surprised, you know, be surprised by the character that, that comes out. Thank you. The beautiful magic. And I love the comment you made about magic, because I think there's a lovely, a lovely magic in the pieces. So thank you for sharing. Oh, thank you so much. And thanks, thanks for uh, talking to us from Ireland. I, I love it. <laughs> thank you, Noel. Who else? Helen? Helen? Yeah, hi. Um, I just wanted to say that um, I was looking at your website during the week and I actually missed completely the point about those paper airplanes in the few images that you showed and the whole thing fell into place for me when I was looking at your presentation. I miss those tiny little white paper planes, especially in one horizon. Uh -huh. and. I'm massively impressed and well, I was you. kind of blown away as well with your professional website and I, I got confused with all the choices that you could have you know to get prints and what have you I just abandoned I thought <laughs> that's overload here but I am massively impressed big time with your technological presentation and etc cetera, etc cetera. so thank you very much well thank you uh, thank you I, I will mention that uh you know, like I said, I said I was trying to get uh, connected. My life has been an art director sees my work and calls me up, and uh, and and to do this, the world that you that we're all involved with now, and and also you know you know with galleries and that sort of approach, and and sell, me selling, trying to sell things online. Uh, I you know, I it, it's been extremely helpful to. To talk with people like Mark and to and work in the group with Paul Klein, but this is uh, the the uh, website. I did a website before, but you have done it and done it for music also. Uh, but this was this is a professional uh, art storefront site, and they're very 
although I haven't taken advantage of all their marketing know-how, uh, I, their, their website is, is, you know, has worked well. Great. Thank you, Helen. Thank who, you. Who else would like to make a comment or who has a question? Anyone? Harvey? Did I understand that he keeps all his originals and only sells prints? I, uh, I, 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 well, I don't keep all of my, uh, keep all of my original. I'll, first, I'll start the, the story of what, il how illustrators work and that most of illustration, and not everybody, but most of illustrators, uh, you do, uh, uh, the, the process is not selling a painting. The pro it used to be a long time ago. You just card off the whole works and, and uh, uh, you know, NC, you, you, you know, NC Wyeth would, uh, uh, the, some art director would get a lot of good paintings on their wall, but uh, it, the time that I've done it, it's you, you're licensing the image, images. And so uh, my work, uh, my most, you know, you, you have some that are, are uh, paid per, you know, per, per use, uh, like a book. Uh, a royalty kind of thing, and some are, you know, uh, but they don't get the images. So I'm not exactly used to, and I'm, so I'm not used to pricing paintings very much and, and that sort of thing. I, I know what I'd have to have if I was doing it as an illustration. And, uh, and, and, and besides the website, I, I haven't set it up to do that. It's just, I've been trying to explore it, and I've gotten people to go, go there. I'm trying, you know, Facebook and all that. I think I got last year, I got 15,000 people to visit the website, you know, and, and not all of them are buying. <laughs> I'll tell you that. But, but uh, it's, it's, um, so as far as originals, uh, I have not had uh, gallery shows. I've had shows like an art, you know, and at an art center and that sort of thing. And at a festival I had, you know, featured art, art artist at a festival, but I haven't uh, connected with a gallery. Okay. Laura? I have to unmute. Okay. Laura? So you say that you sell prints, but are they digital reproductions? Is You're right. I, my apologies. I know that's, I, yeah. it's, it's, they are, uh, they are uh, uh, digital reproductions, yeah. and uh, I have to train myself to say that. It's sort of the colloquial, I use the colloquial term, uh, uh, but you're, you're very right. And I know that it can be a point of contention. Uh, I happen to love my digital reproductions, and I... I haven't, I, I moved, like I say, I moved in this studio before COVID and I have had no paintings out. I have one mural up on the, tacked up on the, up on the wall, but uh, I had no paintings out. So I've got the paintings out this morning and I have to look at them to see is it, is it the original or is, is it a, is it a reproduction? Uh, they are staggeringly uh, accurate. Have you ever made prints? I, I've i done prints um, uh, in that language that I used first to describe prairies. It was, uh, you know, that, that had those, that square. And I've done a other series of like that. Now that was silkscreen. And uh, I did uh, uh, ones that were only it's kind of a gray, I know that's a gray area, not there other people, it's hard to just consider it, but I took tiny little drawings and uh, uh, blew them up and then hand colored them and, uh, but printed them with, with, on, with uh, archival ink myself and which is something I'm not gonna go back to, but, uh, um, and we sold them and, and sold those, but uh, I don't know what you call those. <laughs> Thanks, Laura. Helen, you had a question. 
Yeah, I just want to ask one thing, which is kind of related to what you were talking about. As you were doing your presentation, I wondered, do you do, um, you know, like superimposing images on the computer, you know, like um, photographically layering stuff rather than doing it all by hand? Because some of it looked like um, the face was digital and then another kind of loose painting was gestured and over layered on it digitally. I haven't a clue since I'm not very good with computery stuff, but is that what you do or uh, sometimes? No, I have uh, one, uh, oh, I don't, I, I, I would share it. I had one of the, um, the more sparse um, mural, a very long piece, and that had a few kids in, in the sky. That was the only uh, digital piece that I've ever done. Well, I've done, I played around with it. I've made maquettes before digitally uh, a little bit, but I don't even, I don't like doing that either, you know, uh, a uh, sculpting a face. But um, so what it ended up that it took me, but I, the, none of it is, I never do super, you know, superimposition. I draw it out so that, um, uh, you know, I like I like the the experience of it. It takes, and I, I'll I'll grid it. Uh, I'll do a drawing and and grid it up, and then do uh, final. Uh, uh, you know, just sort of depends. But like like the ones you <laughs> over here, like that. You know, it's it, it's I did a, a a a drawing, kind of a loose drawing. And then uh, uh, worked to try to get the the um, uh, you know this was, this was inspired by a dancer I saw, and who was who had such you know was very tall woman who was very tall, and had really long arms. But anyway, so it's it's but I kind of I think I probably pushed it in with the proportions just because I was just so kind of enthralled with that, uh, the difference in, in the physical structure of people. But anyway, I did the, I did a drawing and then I did another drawing on the, on, on there, uh, and tightened it up. Great. Thank you. I think we have time for one more comment or question before we close out the session. If there's anyone. Okay. Well, Paul, thank you so much. It was absolutely wonderful and inspiring and we